all about Microsoft Teams uh, and how we integrate voice with it. We're going to talk about a few things. Uh, first, we're going to talk about why is it important to your clients? Why does it matter? Um, then we're going to talk about what the options are, what the various different pieces are. Uh, we'll talk about what the various benefits uh, out of those options are. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the shortcomings with the most popular uh, solution so you know what the good and the bad and the ugly are. Um, and then uh, we'll finish up with some time for questions. Uh, you can certainly type questions as we go along in the chat bar here in the uh, meeting interface, and then we can address them later on. That way, if you... If you're like me, you're like, oh, I had a great question. What was it? But you just type it in. It's very useful. Um, and uh, we'll make certainly make some time for having a discussion there because we certainly want to know what you all want to know about. So let's jump right in with it. Uh, why is this important? What does it matter? Um, what kind of things that does it, you know, do you want to spend time on this? Well, the first thing is that there's huge teams adoption. Uh, there's 650,000 companies throughout the United States that are using Office 365 today. And Office 365 includes Teams on virtually every license option. There are a couple of explicitly, we don't include this options, but they're very rare and far between. Basically, all of these various options include Teams. And there are 150 million daily Teams users. So that's a pretty big addressable audience, 115 million of them. Uh, so obviously, one of the reasons is it's very likely the clients we are working with are using Office 365, and if they have it, they have Teams, and, and their people are probably engaging and using it. And Teams has some real value with them. There are some great pieces. They have Teams meetings and the ability to chat and collaborate. They have the ability to integrate with Office 365, uh, and it's very remote friendly, which is, of course, really important nowadays. So there's some real sticky value for people to start using Teams. But the thing that Teams doesn't do well is Teams doesn't do voice well. The base Teams capability gives you the ability to use conferencing and have voice calls if you log on with your computer. And you can call other Teams users that are on your system, and you can have a conversation with them. But you can't talk to anybody outside. Um, you can't make calls to external numbers, receive calls from external numbers. You can't use phone features, and you don't have you know call routing and all that. All of that is add-on to Teams. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But the base Teams doesn't have any of this. So that's one of the reasons why this topic is important, because if they're engaged in the Teams ecosystem, um, they may want to be using voice, and you can help them out with that option. So this is important to, to bring these two together and make this all work. So let's talk about those options. What's behind door number one, door number two? The very first thing that I'll mention is that every solution I'm going to talk about, regardless, there's going to be an additional cost here. Microsoft has a phone system license or a common phone license. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, that's going to cost about $8 per user per uh, month. So every single user that's going to use voice on their system, regardless of the option they use, they're going to have to pay more on their Microsoft bill. So that's an upfront thing to understand. Now, what that license is can be a little fun because Microsoft didn't just say, hey, there's one license. Nope, there's three different options, depending upon what kind of Microsoft license they have. So if the uh, uh, company has Microsoft 365, basic, standard, or premium, these are the smaller solution offerings. These are what you'd get if you just went on the Microsoft site and said, I want to buy Office 365. If they have those, then the license you need to add is called the common area phone license. And still eight bucks a month. You can get a free trial of these, but it's you know a limited time free trial that then you start having to pay for. And that will give you the ability to use any of the options I'm about to talk about. If you are on an enterprise license, so the client's on an enterprise license, they can add what's called the phone system license. So Common area phone for the Microsoft 365, the small and medium business for the enterprise E1 or E3 licenses, they have what's called a phone system license. Now, if they're really up on the top of this and they have the gold-plated E5 license, that includes phone systems. They don't have to add anything else. But that's the only one where they don't have to add something. They have to add one of these if they want to do any of the options we're going to talk about here today. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, so here happens to be my Microsoft 365 admin account, and I'm in licenses, and you see I have an E3 account, 
So I've added on Microsoft 365 phone system that I've then assigned to my various users. If you don't have this step, none of the rest of this is going to work. So that's just an important safety tick. And like I said, there's a cost associated with it. So that has to be rolled up into the decision making process. So what are the options here? Just real quick uh, to get you to understand what this is really doing is without this, in the Teams interface, you don't have the ability to dial and make calls. You can click on other users in your system and make a call, but you don't have this dial pad. You don't have the ability to call out. You certainly can't call in. So that's what this license is. It's eight bucks a month just for that feature in the UI. So option one is, hey, I've got an existing PBX on premise. I'd like to connect to that. That's possible. You have to get the Microsoft phone system license we just talked about. You have a session border controller for your PBX that is Microsoft certified, connected up to Microsoft. So the SBC sits on prem, it connects back to Microsoft, it sends and routes calls there. And you still have your PBX uh, and all the PBX associated costs. You have your phone service, your ship trunking and all that kind of thing. Then you add on the Microsoft license and, you're, and you've got your teams. So this is entirely doable for a customer who has an on-premise PBX. This is, you know, got some problems with it. Every single one of them does, and I'll try and outline them. In this case, I think it's the most expensive because you've still got the phone system, you've got SIP trunking, you've got the SBC, you've got the phone system maintenance, plus the Microsoft additional charges. So the bill ends up probably being the most expensive. It's certainly the most complex because there's all these different components. You've got to make sure that the SBC is maintained. Uh, you've got to make sure that the connection back to Microsoft is there in addition to all the other pieces that run your PBX. Uh, it's the most limited because remote workers are, are always harder with an on-premise PBX. Um, and so that's got uh, uh, issues. And it's the most fragile because of all that complexity we just talked about. It's got the most places it can fail. Now, this could be a good option, though, if you have somebody who has an existing PBX, uh, they're looking for the ability to do something more, they really can't invest a, a lot of, of change right now, they can't get into going to a, you know, a cloud PBX or something along those lines, they don't want to do a huge option, but they have a couple of users that they want to put on Teams. That's the ideal circumstance for this. Um, but like I said, there are the, these various uh, issues. So that's one way you can go about it. The second option for them is to make Microsoft their phone system. So we've already seen you have to buy the Microsoft phone system license, but don't think that gives you a phone system. If you want to be able to call in and out, you're also now going to have to add on a Microsoft calling plan. And these range from $12 to $24 a month, uh, giving you the ability to actually make and receive external calls. This gives you DIDs and the ability to set it up as a true phone system. So in doing this, um, you are able to actually do everything through Microsoft and make them essentially your cloud PBX. Just like the other one, there's some shortcomings. First, um, there are potential per minute overages. We'll those a moment. There's limited voice features. Microsoft is not great at voice. It's never been one of their core competencies. Uh, there's some service reliability issues. We'll talk about those a little more in a moment. And there's the problem of they've got their own currency. We'll, we'll see what I mean by that here in a moment. So let's go through these in a little more detail. I think it's worthwhile digging in. First, phone system features. Microsoft has the ability to have basic phone system capabilities. Everybody can call in and call out. Your end users can have DIDs. You can have an auto attendant. You can have voicemail. Um, and you can have, even Microsoft has team certified phones. We'll talk about those a little more a little later on. They've got the ability to do some basic ACD stuff. So they have the very basics, but they're likely to have key missing features that the customer is using on their current PBX, whatever it is today. Here's the list of Microsoft phone features. It's that one page. There's the link if you want to go look at this. So we, you know, if you, we'll post this later on the CCP page, so you'll have all this information. But that's basically the list of total features. For all of us who've been in the uh, communications world for a long time, we know that most of the time when a phone system presents its list of features, it goes on for pages, right? There's tons and tons of things. That's Microsoft's whole list because this isn't their core competency. This is something they've added on. So that's uh, a, a concern here. The next one is Microsoft does offer a service level agreement for their phone system, but it's three nines. 
I don't know anybody else who only offers three nines, 99.9. So that means that it's acceptable to have almost, you know, 45 minutes of downtime a month under their SLA. And it gets worse because there's a bunch of little weaselly things about the SLA. First, it's measured across all of your office applications. So this isn't just a voice SLA. If you have no voice service all month, but your office stays up and you can still get to Word and Excel, there is no SLA application to it. Next, it doesn't cover calls from mobile or desktop apps, only from the team's IP hard phones. And one of the strengths that people have, one of the reasons we see people going to use Teams for voice is because of the apps. Let me give you a simple example. We have a customer who we're starting a kickoff call with today. They've got about 110 users that are going to be on Teams. Only 60 of them have phones. The other 50 or so are all going to be pure soft phone users. Under this South LA, none of them are covered of those 50 because they're just using the, the apps, right? So there's a big hole in the SLA as well. And finally, it only covers problems caused by the networks managed by Microsoft. So your last mile piece does not count at all. If the customer's using this remotely, the, the home phone, hey, look, we can't cover it at all because it's gotta be on networks managed by Microsoft. So they're basically saying, if there's an internal error in our data centers, it's our problem, but otherwise, good luck. So uh, I've also got the link here so you can go look into this SLA yourself. Um, but that's a real concern because this doesn't show a lot of confidence in their cloud infrastructure for voice with all of these weasel portions to get out of it uh, and a minimal level to begin with. The other problem here is they've got their own little currency going on. So if you have anything that's billable, I talked about there can be minute overages and billable things are like if you have an inbound toll-free number, very, very common scenario. If the customer is making international calls or receiving international uh, calls, uh, that can be an issue. If they're doing conferencing, if they want to use the Teams bridge and they want to have an audio conference, all of those are charged by the minute. But you can't pay them like a normal phone bill. You can't just say, oh, hey, look, I used $120. That's it. You have to pre-buy. You pre-buy what they call communications credits, which are applicable for these uses. And those communication credits are expirable. So if you don't use them after 12 months, they're gone. And Microsoft keeps the money. But if you don't have them, your calls of these types, if someone makes an international call, there's an inbound toll free, and you run out of communication credits, then those, those calls will instantly stop working. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, grace period. There's no grace period at all. So um, I, I'm not really a fan of this system either, because now you have to go buy something else. I mean, this is sort of like, Oh, I can buy a pre-charged gift card, but am I going to use it all? And will it expire? And all those kind of problems. So basically, you're paying for your toll-free minutes with a gift card. So there are some real issues with Microsoft. The main usage scenario I would see that you might point a client at going for the full Microsoft deal is, honestly, if voice isn't that a big a priority for them, if they're much more interested in the various other communications pieces of of uh, teams and they need some voice with the external world, but it's not a priority for their business. It's not how they're mainly communicating with their customers. And they're, you know, there are companies that are exactly like that. In that case, the Microsoft option may be perfect for them. It may be great, but there are these gotchas that I wanted to spend some time on here. So the next option is what is called direct routing. And if you haven't gotten an email talking about Microsoft Teams direct routing in the last two months, I think your email is down because Everyone in the world is sending out emails about webinars, about this and that and the various ways and all that kind of thing. What direct routing is, is this is very much like option one, except for in this case, the SBC is actually managed by somebody else. Here's an example with 8x8 that we work with. Mitel works the same way, Ring Central, a lot of other people are doing this this way now. So you get that Microsoft phone system license, everybody's gotta have it. You gotta have your seat on your, your cloud PBX, uh, this could actually be done with a premise PBX, but it's much more common with cloud. And then you set up the configuration one time. You don't have to worry about the SBC because that's handled by the service. Um, that is part of the whole thing. There is an SBC involved here, but it's transparent to you as a user. So 
the concerns are how seamless is it is, how much management do you have to do, how much do you have to get involved. Hopefully the answer is very little. The complexity, you shouldn't have to get an SBC if they do at this point. Uh, they're, they're making a mistake on the direct routing piece because that's not the business model most people are putting out there. And then this option uses the Teams UI completely. The person is just making and receiving calls in that Teams UI. And they, that means that they should be able to make and receive calls in the Teams mobile interface, in the desktop interface, in the web interface. It doesn't really matter because it's using the Teams interface itself. And there shouldn't be any end user work to be done. The end user shouldn't have to do anything. So there's a lot of good to be said about this. Now, it is an ongoing cost. Um, that's one of those things to consider. There is an ongoing cost to this of some kind. Now, that may be wrapped up in the cloud seat. It may be an add-on charge to the cloud seat. It depends. But usually, this is offered as a service. So this is, you know, honestly, what our preferred option is for people for Teams. We think this is the cleanest because there's least for the customer to have to do. Um, and it's, it's sort of simplest for them to deal with today. Uh, that this is what I generally recommend. But it depends upon the customer. There's different options that we've talked about here. The last thing I'll talk about is I mentioned the good and the bad and the ugly. Here's the ugly. <laughs> uh, the ugly are other solutions to hook this in. You'll see that there are some vendors who are saying, oh, you can install what's called a bot, which is a little bit of code in your Teams piece. And then the end user can like go into the Teams command line and issue a phone command. Um, or it could look for you know a specific call command. You can see that there's a browser plugin that can be loaded in where somebody can say, oh, here, add this onto Chrome, and now you can use this, but only in the web browser version of Teams. You can't do this on mobile. You can't do this in your desktop software. That's not a great one we like either. And then I don't think I've seen anybody do this. We've seen this with Skype in the past. Some vendors have created wraparound software that sits around the Teams software and acts like it's part of it, but really that's got to be installed on every end user uh, and it, as Teams changes things, it may break really quickly. Not a fan of any of these because they either require the end user to do a lot of work, uh, they can break easily, they don't offer the level of integration that you would want. Uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of these. And if you see products offering them, I would suggest to go try something else. So that gives you your options. I'm going to spend most of the rest of the time talking about the direct option, that, uh, direct routing option, that option three, because I think that's the, the best place to be focused on. So let's talk about some of the benefits and why it'd be worthwhile to do this for your customer. Well, first, all the Teams users can make and receive phone calls in Teams. They can stay in Teams and use it, and they're just using one interface. They are unifying the communication that they're using. And even better, all of the non-Teams users can use their phones or their UC software, and they can... Um, the other thing that goes on here is that all of these users, whether they're on Teams or they're not on Teams, can call each other using just extension dialing. So for example, here's my Teams user. I've got set up extension 6100, which is not a Teams phone. That's not, a, no, not one of my Teams users over here. And I can just make a call. It will bring up the Teams interface, and it's just calling my desk phone over here. So you can use the same directory, you can set, use the same extension dial. They can then call like a dock phone, a break room phone, somebody who's just not a Teams user that you don't want to, and they can work back and forth and they all are on the same dial plan. That's one of those, the, the key pieces of this right here. The next part about it is that you can get a call flow that actually meets your client's needs. You know, if you've got somebody who is focused on voice as a key communications path, then I definitely think this is what they need, but they're interested in teams. This is where they need to go because you can create complex call flows. You can use things like IVRs and auto attendance. Uh, you can do intelligent call routing and, and have, you know, more advanced capabilities. All those features that aren't on that one page that Microsoft has. Uh, Microsoft has the basics. They do have an auto attendant. They do have you know, the ability to do an ACD, um, but they're limited in a lot of ways because Microsoft has not spent a long time building out these features. Another area is fax support. There's no e-fax options with Teams. There's no T38 or ATA support. There's no real way to do it. The best thing that I've found is you can set up Microsoft Exchange 
to handle faxing, but it's completely separate from anything to do with Teams or their voice option or any of that. That's basically the, the setting up Microsoft Exchange to uh, send and receive faxes and will be completely different. So if you've got somebody, and there are customers out there where fax is still an important um, communications channel, um, if that's the case, then they're, they're going to have to go get a completely separate service if they wanted to use uh, Teams. Uh, but with a direct routing option, what you can do is you can have the cloud PBX solution that you've already got handle the faxing for you, and that uh, is taken care of, um, and that you know solves the hole or fills the hole for this customer. The other part about it is reporting. Microsoft has some basic reports for voice and teams, but it's really basic. It's basically sort of like, I've got a call log. Uh, a lot of the more advanced analytics that are doing uh, transformation and analysis and all that kind of thing uh, that you find on modern PBX solutions, you're just not gonna get that. Uh, and so this is something where it's much more powerful with the, the PBX on the back end, whether you know it's a cloud solution or a premise solution, um, they're going to be able to provide all of that to let you know your inbound, outbound calls, how many people are hitting your auto, auto attendance, yeah, you know, all of those kind of things, uh, path analysis. Uh, you're going to get all of that with the direct routing option. And Microsoft just doesn't have any of this. The other thing is contact center. Now, you'll notice there's a contact center bullet here on this list of features that I showed before. But let's read what it says. Contact center integration with your favorite contact center software. So they don't actually have a contact center. They're just saying, oh, we'll send a call out to a contact center. So they do have some built-in ring groups, what they call call queues, that are you know, essentially basic ACD groups. Uh, they're a little smarter than just a, a hunt group, ring group kind of thing, but they're certainly not a contact center integration. And if you need a contact center, uh, you would integrate it with a third party over the top contact center, which can work. But one of the nice pieces here is with the direct routing option, you can have uh, a solution, for example, you know, as we mentioned, eight by eight previously, they have a contact center solution that's all part and parcel to the, with their UC solution. Um, you can use all of that with the direct outing, a direct routing option, and even have agents using Teams as their front end if you want them to, but still have all the queuing capability in the background. So that's another benefit you get there. Another thing that's an advantage of using this, and another reason why a client might, is phone selection. Teams phones are all using essentially a client interface, which means they have big, impressive screens and some real uh, computing horsepower on the back end. Uh, that makes them more expensive. Uh, I've seen one phone that's predicted to be like closer to $100 than $200 a phone um, out there, and I don't think it's released yet. There's a Yalink phone that's coming that, that's supposed to MSRP at like $108. That's the cheapest phone that's actually team certified that I've seen. So that's not real suited to where I just need a break room phone, I need a phone in the warehouse or something like that, because these are more expensive, uh, more complex phones. Uh, they're pretty and they, they do, I mean, they're, they're basically like, oh, I've got a smartphone interface on my phone, right? Uh, they're all touch screens, uh, that, that's, that's the way they work. Um, but that's just not suited to a lot of environments. So the nice thing here is you can mix and match and say, hey, I can have a low-end phone that doesn't have a Teams interface that's just uh, for calls. I can make calls to anybody that's on the Teams side. People from the Teams side can call this number. All that great stuff works. Uh, and you have options here rather than being stuck with only the more expensive phones. So what are the shortcomings of this? This all sounds great, but there are shortcomings. First and foremost, you've got to understand the only thing that pretty much any vendor out there is offering as far as Teams integration is calling support voice support. So you're talking about the voice channel here. So there's no integration with the various UC products, chat or groups or collaboration. Uh, there's no integration to the features, uh, to that other huge feature set that we talk of as unified communications. That just isn't there. It's pretty much a voice channel. And that's an expectation setting thing that needs to go on so that the uh, client understands that. Theoretically, hopefully Microsoft's going to release some more APIs and make this more accessible so that people can do this. But right now, pretty much there's no way to really get into this. <laughs> Another item is that when Teams users are calling other Teams users, that call never leaves Teams. So if I get my Teams interface here 
and I go call another Teams user, I call Ann or Delia or Will, um, that call will never transit the PBX. And that means that there's no record in the phone system. All that cool reporting and logging that I talked about, they're not going to see that call. There is no way for them to see that call. It just doesn't happen. And if you're using call recording, that call will not be recorded either because it's only on the team side. And so that is something that you have to think very carefully about, about the use cases for the client to make sure that they understand where that's going to be. Now, lots of people, they don't really care about, you know, logging and reporting on their internal calls. They only care about calls made to the outside world and received from the outside world. And all of that will absolutely be covered. But when you have a Teams to Teams only user, that call is going to be handled by the Teams UI using Teams VoIP. And it's never going to leave and go out to the other system. There's just no way to do it that we found. Another key one is if you're going to have hard phones, Teams users should use Teams certified phones. It's the best user experience. And so the problem with this is uh, it leads to potentially different types of phones if the person wants to standardize uh, because Teams model phones have a specific firmware and specific UI and all that, and they are designed for Teams. You don't really have those phones working in two different variations. Um, and that also is means you've got a limited set of phones you're looking at because the, the ecosystem of Teams phones out there is, I mean, there's a decent number of them, but it's a very, very limited set that you've got to look at. And the reason why we say this is it's possible to have somebody who has Teams as their UC client, and then they have, say, an 8x8 or a Mitel phone sitting on their desk. But here's the problem. Let's go back to that scenario we just talked about a moment ago, Teams to Teams call. If a Teams user calls another Teams user using the Teams interface, and they have, say, a Mitel phone sitting on their desk, that phone will never ring because the call never went over to the Mitel system, right? So it doesn't even know if somebody's being called. Or if somebody's on a team to team call, they can have their phone start ringing because the system doesn't know you're already on a call. So any kind of um, call forwarding or you know busy no answer kind of things will not happen in that circumstance. So you get some weird circumstances and you get some bad use cases if they're using a phone that's not a Teams phone in that case. If they have a Teams phone, then the Teams UC client, the Teams phone, the, the two of them, they work perfectly together and they know the other one's on the phone and all that kind of stuff. There's no way that Microsoft's exposed for me to be able to say, oh, hey, I'm on a phone call here or that for the Teams to Teams user calls to ring the phone today. So we highly suggest this um, and that that is a limiting factor and a shortcoming of this. Now, it's not really a shortcoming compared to anything else because there's no option where you would do it a different way, right? Other than not using Teams. But it is one of those caveats to look at. And then one of those ones we've heard quite a few from uh, customers that are talking to us about Teams integration is the first thing they wanna do is, hey, look, can I use my phone system uh, that I'm hooking up to be the audio bridge for my Teams meetings and stick it in there? And no, you can't. Um, and part of it is that whole communications credit and how Microsoft charges this and all this. It's not everyone's favorite thing. Uh, we There isn't a way to do this that we've seen to this point. That doesn't mean it won't change, but that's what we've seen. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of information I've just thrown at you. We've seen why this is important to your clients. We've seen what the options are. We've seen... Um, what uh, kind of things are happening here um, as far as, I've got the wrong uh, uh, wrong agenda slide on here, sorry. Agenda shot. But um, we've, we've uh, looked through the different options. We saw what the benefits are. We saw what the shortcomings are. Uh, and now let's spend a little time. I've talked enough. What kind of things do you really want to ask about? What kind of things have I not covered? Let's see if we can play stump the Kevin on teams. It's very possible. But what kind of questions do you all have? We don't seem to have anything in the chat yet. If anyone wants to just ask a question, uh, I'm happy to hear it. Be sure you unmute before you ask your question. <laughs> it's easier to hear that way. But as far as the uh, topic, it's been a hot one this week. I've got a couple of notes that uh, this is our third presentation on Teams this week. So we'd love to hear your questions. I've put them all to sleep, Fran. <laughs> wow. Everybody's multitasking. They're all writing emails to clients right now. 
nobody's going off mute. All right. Well, if you do have a question, you know where to find us. Please so reach out. Go ahead. Um, Melissa has asked in the chat if I could talk a little bit about challenges with analog devices. Yeah, Microsoft really doesn't have a solution for ATAs and uh, those kind of devices. This is where the direct out routing option helps. Uh, because if you have your, your cloud PBX or even your premise PBX hooked up, now you can have those analog devices plugged in there. There's no reason they're going to need access to the Teams UI and the Teams feature. So you don't need Teams integration over there. This is a real problem if you're just using Microsoft as a phone system because they don't have great options here. Uh, but analog devices and, you know, all those little things that just show up the that you've got to figure out what to do. Oh, we've got a door phone. Oh, we've got this. Oh, we've got paging and we've got an external paging system we want to hook into. Microsoft just really doesn't have a way of dealing with that. Their view is, oh, well, this is a bunch of users talking to each other. And I honestly think we've seen that over, at this point, I think I've been dealing with Microsoft for 15 plus years on them trying to do stuff with voice. And they, they never quite understand how voice really works in a company because Microsoft as far as I can tell, designs it for Microsoft. And Microsoft doesn't operate like a lot of other organizations. But so they don't have a lot of ways to do those kind of things. In fact, they don't have really much of anything. Uh, analog devices are going to be a, a real challenge unless you go uh, in the direct routing mode. And then the PBX that's hooked into it, whether it be a cloud uh, UCAS solution or a premise PBX, as I said, that can handle all the analog devices fine for you. Uh, and can be in the same dial plan if people need to call them or call out, all that kind of stuff that works. Uh, so that's another reason to go with the direct routing mode for this rather than going with the Microsoft solution uh, because they just, it, it's painful uh, and, and you start having to look at ways to, to deal with that. So hopefully that covered what you were looking for, Melissa. Um, so uh, a couple things that are asked, can you put a call on hold in Teams? Yeah, absolutely. There are, you know, your basic phone features. So if, um, I have uh, somebody, I'll do it the other way this time. So I'll call in from my phone into Teams. You can see my call coming in. And you can see where the call has come up and I'm talking with them. Interesting UI, all, instead of there being big buttons down here on, under everybody else's systems, um, uh, you know, in every other UC client, you see all these big buttons. Microsoft just has a big empty field where you can have a picture of the person. Uh, my options are under a little ellipses button for hold and transfer, consult transfer. So I do have some options here where I can sit there and just put this call on hold uh, and I can get that call back. So the basics are there. Parking, different thing. So. So the next question, where well, we're getting going now, it's great. Uh, next question is, describe 911 compliance. Yeah, so uh, great question. Uh, it really depends upon uh, the different piece and part of it. So with your you know, direct routing, it's whatever the PBX behind it does, uh, and that will work. And the reason that will work is because a 911 call is an external call, right? So the, the problems, the shortcomings of, oh, only a Teams to Teams call does not affect here. It will go through the PBX. The PBX can apply the user's caller ID information settings uh, to the call. You can you know, do things like get uh, notifications for carries law and that kind of stuff. All of that can work. Microsoft itself has some decent settings for this. They actually do do compliance on this pretty well. Uh, and um, I don't really have a problem with them on their 911 compliance. They have it built in for pretty, uh, pretty decent um, 911 compliance, Greg. So, um, so the question is, can the, the teams can transfer a call? Can they conference a third party into the call? So um, great question. And the answer I'm, I'm, is yes, but honestly, I haven't done it before. Um, I, I demo this and it just doesn't come up so before. So, um, but yeah, you, you should be able to do a three-party conference. So, um, and then the next question is, can you address the license cost for vertical phone integration? Well, I mean, it depends uh, upon what we're doing and what we're offering. There's a different, uh, there's generally an, uh, some add-on cost for most of the direct routing third-party products. That covers the piece of managing and maintaining and keeping the SPC link up and all that kind of thing. 
Um, with Mitel, there's one cost. Uh, with 8x8, there's a different one. Uh, so it just depends. I mean, they're usually something like uh, 5 to $10 per user um, is what the cost we're seeing out there in the marketplace at this point is for, for that feature. So um, no, there, there, there can be sort of a, a stack cost when you go after this um, as you start adding on these various pieces. It's eight dollars for the Microsoft side, and then you know five to ten for the, that connection, and then you know you have the seat, the, the cloud seat itself. So um, great question of how does the Microsoft plans compare cost-wise to direct routing? Well, that's that's a really good question. Uh, I generally think that you know your standard cloud uh, UCAS seat nowadays, depending upon feature set, ranges anywhere between ten and, and thirty dollars. Uh, you know you have some of the the lower end seats and capabilities uh, at somewhere between ten and fourteen dollars, and then you have some of the higher end seats anywhere between 20 and $30, those can really range. So um, to, I'll give you a specific example. Let's use eight by eight as an example. I can get international calling to multiple countries um, included with unlimited other calling for less than Microsoft's $24 plan on eight by eight, pretty straightforwardly. Um, and it, you know, obviously there's discounting involved and all that kind of stuff, but just talking about list price uh, is, is right there. Um, and I think that's that's a pretty decent comparison. And I can honestly get a unlimited U.S. calling uh, plan that's going to be very very comparable there in the twelve to fourteen dollar range for uh, Microsoft's base plan. So those th there isn't a cost difference. I didn't call that out because pretty much that cost is is not going to be different. And they both have to have the eight dollar base phone system license. Um, so there's there's not a lot there. The only question may be what that middle integration licenses. That could be the cost differential there, Ken. A lot of good questions here after we gave everybody a minute. So I'm going to give everybody a minute more because people may be typing away. I need to cue the music in the background. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh, exactly. I don't get in trouble there. So I think that was a short enough clip to count. You know, so. <laughs> I knew where you were headed. Oh. Well, if you do have any other questions, absolutely, we're available. Um, pass, I'll pass those along to Kevin, and he can get back to us. And if you have a specific customer uh, or or a client that you are thinking about, we'll be happy to sit down and you know have a discussion about their specific needs and what makes sense and, and where to go. Happy to, to, to help you out so that you can have the right information to advise them. And if you have specific topics you'd like to hear about on additional webinars, you know, absolutely reach out. Let us know what you want to hear about. I don't see anything else coming in. Give them one more minute and we'll give everybody time and their day back. All right. Everybody loves time in their day back, right? So never have enough of that. As I mentioned before, we'll have the recording as well as the deck with the individual links and such. Um, those will all be on the uh, CCP page uh, for you. And uh, Fran will let you know when those get put up. I think everybody's shutting down. Thank well, you thanks so much for joining us. Go ahead, Fred. I was going to say, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day. Stay safe and, and stay in touch. Let us know how we can help.